I just want to go out for a spin. I uh, was sitting in there at a computer, feeling hot and bothered. And if I come out in the car, I've got air conditioning, I've got 137 kilometers to play with. Where can I go? And there was a cat there, sitting in the road, daring me to run it over. And it had to move. It had no choice. Oh, going down the road here and there's another dog in the road. The dog's called Baloo. And it's a French dog. Okay then, so, I think it's about time I talked about all the things that I love with regard to my car. I love the ProPilot Assist, it's fantastic. I'll be switching that on shortly. And with ProPilot Assist, I can let go of the steering wheel for around about seven seconds, which is enough, really, you know. Uh, for seven seconds, it means that, you know, I could reach something if I needed to. I could just um, shake my arms and give my arms a bit of a break if I... Oh, another cat in the road. <laughs> I'm going to have some pizza cats this evening, the way things are going there. Anyway, so um, ProPilot Assist is absolutely wonderful. Um, the ProPilot Assist on this car, there's a little bit of a problem with it because uh, last time I went out with uh, the car to Barcelona, um, about um, halfway down the road there towards Barcelona on the motorway, the ProPilot Assist started complaining. Um, the front radar, there's a problem with it. Um, quite a few people have seen this problem on the, on the car. It's a part that they've uh, put into these cars and it just doesn't work. So let me just uh, turn a left at this junction here. It's always a bit of a blind junction going out left because you can't see very well. Anyway, so a lot of people have complained about this particular part and so it's a known problem and Nissan are dealing with it. I took the car in to get some paperwork last Monday, yeah, Monday when I have a day off and what happened was is that the um, they went in there put it in there connected the computer to it did a bit of check-in they said they couldn't really find anything wrong but there's an intermittent problem but uh, they made some notes and they said they would contact Nissan and uh, just a couple of days later they rang me up and says right we'll change the front radar sensor for you and we'll put a new one in and you'll be fine you're gonna leave the car with us for one day because of the fact that we need to do some calibration we'll uh, give you a courtesy car to play with for one day and it's gonna work out okay because on that day I was going to go to Barcelona anyway to go and take my family down to the airport although it's later on in the evening so it's not quite the best time of day to it but still so I'll uh, go down, drive the car down there, grab their car and swap over and go to the airport and then drive home. I will have to drive back down to Barcelona the next day to go and get my car back again. And the bad news is that the car that they'll give me, the courtesy car, is probably going to be an ICE. Internal or infernal combustion engine. So, uh, well, I can live with that, I suppose. It's only for one day. It'll only make me love my Nissan Leaf even more when I get back into it and everything's just working perfectly with having electric for my transmission and my drive power and everything like that. So I'm going out onto the main road now and I'll be turning on ProPilot in a moment or two. I could press the button now. So the button is pressed ready. And oh my goodness, this uh, road is a bit busy. I normally just pull out into the traffic here and uh, and I'm going to do that now. So, let's go. Oh, that's one of the things I absolutely love about this car. The fact that it's got such brilliant acceleration. I'm in D mode, which is the best mode for acceleration. And I was able to just uh, give it some welly and pull out into the traffic and do it safely. So that's bloody marvellous. And it's so much better than the uh, previous car that I was uh, had, the uh, Renault Clio. Because the Renault Clio, a uh, lovely car, but it was underpowered. Um, didn't bother me in the slightest because uh, I didn't drive that fast. I don't drive that fast. And even with this car, I won't be driving that fast because I'm this car, I'm more interested in the uh, uh, economic, I'll try and say it properly, economy and energy efficiency 
So with this car, I'm trying to uh, use as little uh, power as possible. Oh, got a notice from the car saying there's a speed camera. And I'm just about to go past the speed camera now. So that's handy. It tells me in advance when the speed cameras, even though the, the navigation is not working, which is kind of good, really. Uh, I quite like that. So I've got my uh, speed setting up to uh, 96 kilometers per hour. And at the moment I'm going at 81 because the car in front is going at uh, 81 or 82. And uh, that's uh, the brilliant thing about having the Pro Pilot Assist. I absolutely love it for that. I suppose the road is a bit busy at the moment because of the fact that uh, it's a Saturday, people have been down to the beach and now they're just going home again. So that's part of the fun of being by the coast. Uh, I like it. I like living by the coast. Okay, so we're on Pro Pilot Assist. Um, I've got the screen on here. This is one of the things I love about uh, the car, is that you can change which screen you want to have a look at. Um, there's uh, a number of choices there that you can choose from. And I've got the one which at the moment is showing me the uh, speedo in kilometres in digital readout. Because I really don't get looking, I don't tend to look at the uh, analogue speedo because speedo, I don't like it. Um, I much prefer having a uh, digital readout, so that's kind of nice. And that's just told me that the Pro Pilot Assist has turned itself off. Um, I've still got the um, intelligent cruise control, which is lovely. And I'm pulling around to the left because this is one of those junctions where it splits and you have to be in the right lane if you want to go towards Barcelona. So I'm on the road towards Barcelona now. Still got the setting at 96, and I'm going 96, and I think the speed limit down here is going to turn to 80 in a minute. But, uh, there's no speed there's cameras down this part anyway, so even though it's at 80, I could um, continue at this speed and just keep up with the flow of the traffic, which is going uh, 96 kilometers per hour, approximately. Anyway, um, it's turned off again. It turned back on and then turned back off. You get that sort of bing bong every time it turns off the uh, Pro Pilot Assist. Which is nice to know, because you want to be able to have your hands on the steering wheel and be in control of the car if the uh, steering assist keeping you in the side of the lane is turned off. That's important, that is. Okay, so uh, we're going towards uh, Lurette de Mar, which is uh, not the most uh, lubrious of uh, holiday towns. It's a place where a lot of English go there and get drunk. And I've just been watching the Spanish television where they've been reporting about uh, people going to places in Malaga and places place called Magaluf. I think that's what it's called anyway. I was just yeah, basically watching it a bit. And they were showing crazy, um, mostly English people, I have to admit, uh, jumping off balconies into the swimming pool, possibly giving themselves injuries doing so because, I mean, there's not that much um, depth of water in a swimming pool if you're jumping through from two stories up. You, I mean, you're bound to sort of uh, hit your legs on the floor or your back or something, and you can easily do yourself a whole lot of damage, but still. That's people for you. That's the young ones. And quite often when they're doing this as well, they're uh, drunk as skunks. And uh, part of the problem is the fact that uh, when these uh, young ones go to these places, they, uh, they come from a culture where it's um, okay to go on binge drinking and get as drunk as possible. That is the aim of the game. They want to go out and get as drunk as possible and um, the bars, they facilitate it. What they do is they give a price where you can pay 25 euro and drink as much as you want. So a free bar for, I mean, basically they know that you're only gonna be able to drink so much because at a certain point you're gonna to be totally sort of drunk that you can't drink anymore. And I suppose 25 euro covers that. If they get enough people in there doing that, I mean, the only thing they have to worry about is cleaning up the vomit afterwards. Oh, disgraceful. I was never into drinking. In fact, I'm a teetotaler, so I'm still not into drinking, and I'd much rather it be that way. Anyway, so we're going to go to Lloret de Mar just because I want to get out and have a drive, and I've got 47% uh, in the battery. That's 117 kilometres. And then when I get back home, I'll put it on charge, and I'll charge it up overnight, and I'll have a full battery by the time I have to go to work tomorrow. What else do I love about my car? There's lots of things I love about it. Another thing I love about it is the Apple CarPlay. Uh, I was hoping to get Apple CarPlay when I bought my Renault Clio, but sadly that wasn't going to be. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, it's just uh, wasn't available. And even in the uh, the people that are buying the Renault Zoe now, 
you still can't get um, Apple CarPlay. You can get Android Auto, but for some reason or other, they haven't put the um, Apple CarPlay in there. But Apple CarPlay, if you've got an iPhone, is absolutely phenomenal. So it always used to bug me with the um, entertainment system or infotainment system in the Renault Clio that I'd get in there and say I wanted to uh, connect with uh, Siri. I'd press a button and, uh, pr and in, instead of um, being able to ask Siri something, it would try and make a phone call. If I wanted to um, send a message or something like that, none of it worked. It was useless. It should have connected with the phone and actually sort of you know, done something useful for me, but it didn't. Anyway, so now what I can do is I can um, press the home button on the uh, CarPlay screen and Siri comes into play. With that, I can say, um, hey Siri, send a message to my mum or to my wife or to whoever I want to send a message to. And with that, it will send a message off. It will read the message back to me before I dictate the message and I don't have to type anything in, which obviously is something that you want if you're driving. So I can keep my eyes on the road. I can dictate the message in and it will read the message back to me and ask me if it's OK. Do you want to send it? And I say, yes, send it or send and off it goes. I can also press the Siri button and say, Siri, play me some music. Or I can say, Siri, play me some... Uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club or David Bowie or whatever I want to listen to and it will play that music which is lovely oh, really really very nice indeed uh, what else can I do with it uh, let's just go to the home screen again obviously I can make phone calls with it I can tell it to make a phone call which is great um, that was another thing before when I was um, driving into Girona to pick up my wife and I wanted to uh, say to her that I was just uh, a short distance away and I'll be there soon. Um, I'd have to wait until I got to some traffic lights. And I've just gone past another speed camera. She was just telling me about that. So I'd have to get wait till I got some traffic lights. And then I'd have to frantically press some buttons on my phone there to uh, send a, a text message to say that I was nearly there. Because obviously I didn't want to do any sort of uh, texting and driving because that is dangerous. You shouldn't do it. But with using Siri, it's perfectly safe and excellent. The other thing that I have with this is um, <clears throat> maps, but I don't like Apple Maps. And I'm very much looking forward to when uh, iOS 12 comes around in autumn, because that's when we're going to get the marvellous Waze and uh, Google uh, Maps. Google Maps is good. I like using Google Maps if, uh, if uh, I can't use Waze, um, but I've got used to using Waze and it's Waze is more of a uh, driver's application than it is a maps application because if, if you want to you can you know, put in there that there's an accident or you can put in that there's slow moving traffic or there's a traffic jam so that you're alerting other drivers and crowdsourcing information about the road that you're driving on which if you're another driver uh, last time I was using Waze and I was going down towards the airport in Barcelona um, it was guiding me off onto other paths, other routes so that I'd miss the traffic jams ahead. Now that is good, that is, that's brilliant. Another time I was using Waze, I was going towards uh, Terrassa, where I bought this car from, and then instead of going up the main road, it guided me off onto some little road, and uh, it was a bit of a sort of tortuous route, it was very bendy and everything, but I was moving all the time. If I'd have gone the other way, I probably would have been stuck in traffic, and uh, obviously Waze was sensible enough and uh, intelligent enough to be able to uh, point me in the right direction. So that's uh, a couple of good things. Um, I've got other things on there, such as the podcast app. Um, the Apple Podcast app is okay, but I don't tend to use it because I've got my podcast on my iPhone using Pocket Casts. I like Pocket Casts. I like the way that it works. Um, I've got a, a playlist or an Up Next uh, playlist, which works out really good. And with that, I can sort of um, organise what I want to listen to beforehand and just have it play one thing after another, so that's good. I've also got Anchor on there, which is another uh, podcasting system, which is great. Um, I actually make podcasts, the EV20Q podcast, which goes through, out through Anchor. Um, Anchor is um, it's great for making podcasts. It's really so easy. If you want to make a podcast and you want to, don't want to bother about things like um, uh, hosting of uh, the audio files and stuff like that, you can do it with Anchor. It's brilliant. Highly recommend it. Anyway, this is where I'm going to turn off now. I'm going to so be pulling off and going off on the road towards Lloret de Mar. 
The trip I'm doing is around about um, 37, 40 kilometres. So I've got plenty of um, uh, juice in the battery to get me there and back. And I'm just pulling off now to get there. And I've still got the uh, Pro Pilot on. And uh, I indicated because when you um, cross the line there, it will complain when you've got Pro Pilot on. And I just touched my foot onto the brake. Uh, because I want, I've got e-pedal on and with e-pedal what I can do is I can basically use one pedal for driving that's the other thing that's brilliant with this car e-pedal is absolutely phenomenal I love it so I don't have to touch the brakes when I'm using e-pedal and it'll hold you on when you're on a hill so we've got to pull into some traffic here let me just have a look okay again we're safe and so I've got to pull out again over into this lane here and I'm spot on on the road doing great and I can turn the um, Pro Pilot back on again press the resume button and we're in business so now I'm on a it's not a main road it's um, a single track road not a dual carriageway and uh, the um, uh, steering, keeping in lane works great because there's a line on either side, it's working perfectly. It was just giving me a um, warning there again, another speed camera. That's three, is it three? Three or four speed cameras I've passed so far and it's been telling me every time. I don't know what the speed limit is on that, in fact it, it, I do know the speed limit because it tells me in the car here. The screen I've got in front of me tells me that the speed limit is 80 kilometres per hour. And it looks like when I come back out of uh, Tossa de Mar, I'm going to be uh, getting into some traffic again. And the speed limit has just changed down to 60, but on the screen here it's still saying 80. Um, it's supposed to recognise the, uh, the, uh, the road, sing road signs, but it didn't recognise that one. And I don't know why. Oh, it has. It's just changed to 60. It knows we're in 60 zone now. So that's another intelligent thing with this car. It tells you when you're in a different zone and the uh, change is coming again and it should tell me I'm back into an 80 zone again. So it's pretty good, it uh, works great. So I'm looking down at the screen in front of me and I can see that I've got the, um, on the right hand part of the uh, screen where it changes there. Uh, the top part, it tells me the speed limit I'm supposed to be going at. It's got the uh, little blue symbol for the uh, Pro Pilot Assist. And I'm going too fast. I need to change my speed down because the car in front is going uh, too fast. And the car, this car is following the car in front, keeping that speed up. And I don't want to uh, be driving faster than the speed limit, uh, especially on these curves. Have to concentrate. Anyway, so we've got the little uh, blue mark on there which shows that uh, the uh, Pro Pilot Assist is working. The um, keeping in lane has turned itself off at the moment, but I still do have the uh, intelligent cruise control. Next to that, on the right hand side of those markings, I've got a thing which tells me the uh, maximum speed it's set at. So it's set at 79 kilometres per hour, just below the speed limit. Then underneath that, what I've got is I've got a uh, a small version of the um, eco sort of uh, graph um, whatever you call it there is basically sort of like a, a dial or something right and you've got the bit on the blue there which tells you if you're um, um, regenerating you've got the mark there which is basically what you're using if you're coasting and then above that you've got your number of points there of how much um, energy you're using and there's a whole pile of uh, motorbikes just going the other way and uh, a trike as well, a three-wheeler jobby. Anyway, so now I'm um, <coughs> using sort of juice. It's gone sort of uh, four bars into using the juice there and it's uh, basically sort of giving me a nice sort of economical drive, which is what we want, isn't it? The reason I'm coming out to Lurette de Mar is because I just wanted to drive, but I had to have somewhere to drive to. So what I'm going to do is I'm driving to the uh, Aldi, I think it's an Aldi, it could be a little one of the two, in the Lurette de Mar as you're going in there and at that place somewhere there is a uh, charging point. I'm not going to use a charging point there unless I'm able to, I might sort of plug in and just see if I can put a bit of charge in there just for fun. 
Um, it's a rapid charger. Um, I think I probably would need a card to charge it there. I'd need an RFD, I, RFID card. Uh, I don't have one yet. I'm waiting for the uh, application, which is why I was going to Terrassa and Barcelona the other day to get the paperwork necessary so I could put in the application. I might have to wait three weeks before I get it. So, uh, in the meantime, I don't really need it because most of the journeys I do are to work and back. I do have other cards. I've got um, an e card, which is one where they've got petrol stations I can charge up at. And there are one or two places where I can just plug in and charge for free anyway. There's an Aldi in Kalonja, which I went to the other day, and uh, I plugged in there. But it was only throwing out uh, three, kilo, three kilowatts. And uh, I'd have to be spending hours there for it to have any effect. And if you go to an Aldi to do some shopping, I mean, basically you're only there for, uh, for how long are you going to be there for? Half an hour at the most to do some shopping. And uh, you're not going to put many kilometres into the battery during that amount of time, are you? Anyway, so um, I plugged in that one there just to try it out. It was charging for a bit. <clears throat> and then for some reason I looked at it again, it wasn't charging. I don't know why. I'll have to give it, I'll give it another try some other day and see what's, uh, see what's the problem. Um, just for the sake of trying it out. Um, I like going shopping at Aldi anyway, uh, but generally I go to, this, to do Aldi shopping at the nearest Aldi, which is not far from where I work. Uh, just change the speed down a wee bit. I'm going through a tunnel here. And there we go. I'm inside a tunnel. Lovely. So uh, this is a bit of a windy road, this is, and because it's windy I'm taking the um, maximum speed down. <coughs> I've got it set for 72 now. And I'm into regen mode because I'm going down the hill, which is great. Now if you're in a petrol car, or a diesel car, well you wouldn't want to be a diesel car these days would you, because diesel is certainly not a de rigueur. So anyway. Uh, if you're a diesel car and you're going down a hill, you might be using less juice, but you're not going to be putting any extra juice into your fuel tank. Whereas uh, going down a hill, when we're in an electric car, I'm putting more power into the battery. Um, I've still got 39% in the battery. Gee, when I left I had, uh, I think 54, wasn't it? Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll have enough to get home. There was 115 in the car when I was leaving and now it's telling me I've got 99 kilometres left. Anyway I think probably what I'll do is because I'm getting down to 40% of the battery I'll try and see if I can plug in at this charger. I don't have the granny charger with me, the, um, the cable which allows you to charge off a normal uh, Shuko electric, pu uh, pub electric plug. Okay so we're coming down the hill still. We're heading in towards Lurette and I can already see some of the um, things from Lurette. There's a little sort of blue bally thing on top of a, um, uh, a tower and that's where the water park is. And where we're going to is somewhere near there. I can also see a crane and that crane is where people go up in this crane and they jump off. Yeah, they do bungee jumping. Not something I'm going to do anytime soon. And we're coming into a 60 mile, 60 kilometer an hour zone. And I'm changing the uh, settings on my uh, Pro Pilot Assist. And I've changed it down to 62. I'll slow down anyway because I've got cars in front. And in fact, I'm coming into Lurette de Mar now and the uh, speed limit is changing again down to 50. Um, people generally like to go above the uh, what the speed limit is. So it's coming down now to uh, 40, 40 zone. And we're coming past a petrol station there, and it's by Essa. Now Essa is one of these places that does. Um, I think they do these. Um, they do these car charging points as well. I've noticed it on the plug share app. Um, maybe that's where there's a charger there. I don't know. I'll have a look in plug share in a bit and uh, check it out on the on the way through. We're going past the go karting area. These sorts of things as you find in these um, uh, holiday uh, destinations. And there's a big sign there saying, Adjuntament de Lloret de Mar. 
and we're going around a few roundabouts. I have to pay attention to the uh, driving, going past the entrance to the uh, water world. There's a water world as well in Plagidaro where I work. Now, do you know what? That um, Essa is the uh, charging point of that garage back there. Do you know what? I could have swore, honestly, I could have swore that there was going to be put in a uh, charging point here, somewhere around by the uh, little, and I was wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive back down to that uh, petrol station, the Essa petrol station, and go and have a look at this charger and uh, see if what see what's needed to be able to use it. I don't think, I suppose it's going to be a free one if it's part of a petrol station, but what I'll do is I'll go there, have a look at it, take a photograph, and then I'll move on. Okay, here we go. I want to take a photograph and put it into the uh, plug share app because there hasn't been anyone taking any photographs there yet. And they do like it if you have a photograph in there. And uh, what I may do is I might ought to do a photograph using the uh, What Three Words app. And I'm just going past the police station. Right roundabout now. And there's an Aldi there as well. What if there's a charging point for Aldi? Because there's a charging point at the Aldi in uh, Kalanja. Anyway, so I've got to this charging point. I'm going to take a photograph of it. And I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. We'll see. Anyway, though, this is Dave Allen having a bit of a chat on the drive from home to Lirette de Mar.